All right, welcome back. Uh, so, the YouTube algorithm has suggested to me a video from Self Sufficient Me on 10 reasons why you shouldn't keep ducks. And I think the majority of those reasons are absolute shit, to put it plainly. Uh, and there's a few reasons I think that. <clears throat> Uh, based on what I saw in his video and uh, the breeds he has and his complaints overall. Um, now, I'm not, I, I want to start out by saying I'm going to judge a lot in this video. And you guys are very welcome to criticize me. In fact, I welcome it. Uh, please do. Um, I don't think that I'm the best in anything that I do. I think that a lot of his complaints are uh, valid, but. I think that he did them to himself. Uh, and the reason I think that is because he's treating his ducks like chickens. And you can't do that. So let's go through, uh, and I'll link his video down below as well. Dog hair on my face. Um, let's go through his reasons. And uh, I'll explain to you what I think. Um, and like I said, I am not a professional. I've been doing this I don't know, four years at this point, but there's things that work. And if you manage to rub a couple brain cells together, you can overcome those obstacles instead of just resting on what it is and accepting it as unacceptable, right? Uh, so first thing, I got my list here. Uh, first thing is loudness. So loudness can be a problem. Um, You'll notice in the background, you can hear traffic noises. Uh, for me, loudness isn't especially a problem because I get to listen to the highway. Uh, it's not an issue to some extent. Uh, there's no bird louder in my opinion than guineas. Uh, if you value quiet, don't get guineas. They are one of the loudest damn birds and they never shut up. So don't, don't get them. Uh, but anyway, loudness. So you'll notice that you can't especially hear all of my birds in the background. And it's not because I've done anything to quiet them down or because I'm masking them uh, with the highway. Let's, uh, let's rotate my camera around and I'm going to show you where they're currently uh, residing so here we go so this bush here uh, is their favorite bush and this is actually a butterfly bush I think I don't know um, so let's go ahead and zoom in on them uh, my bin with a camera for when I brood them you can see there's a bunch of ducks underneath of there and that's kind of their favorite place to be um, you'll notice that they're laying under there and they're not making a ton of noise and they're being good ducks. And they are like that the majority of the time. Uh, they're not loud. Uh, unless they see something that excites them. And that's usually a hawk or some sort of bird flying up above there. Um, but they're quiet. Uh, for, for the most part. Um, so these are these are runner ducks. And they are, uh, you know, for, for me, they're the duck that I, that I like. Um, they're not... You have to excuse the mess here, and I'm sorry about that. It, you know, I had a box of filters there blow over, and uh, how do you get loose? And I ordered some niacin for my niacin issue. But uh, you'll notice that they're doing their thing, and they're not really uh, super loud or any of that stuff. And you know, the loudest they'll ever really be is when they see something that excites them. Um, they're just runner ducks aren't a super loud bird. Uh, that and Muscovies. So Muscovies, if you value quiet, are not loud either. You can see I got a couple over there. Um, and I also have geese. I've actually got uh, 20 geese, I believe. 15, something like that. I don't know. I don't count anymore. Um, and then I got a bunch of uh, ducks as well. And I've probably got about 70 ducks. But the majority of the time, they make hardly any noise. So uh, this is about breed, really. Um, 
Nah, look at my shadow. I look dumb. Uh, so this is about breed. Loudness is breed specific. Um, if you're if you if you value quiet, go for a Muscovy or a Runner or something like that or whatever. So his his concern about loudness, uh, I can I can understand. Uh, I I don't really find it to be that much of an issue. Uh, just because I have geese and I've experienced what guineas are and, you know, loudness. But loudness is a valid concern. It's just he did, he he has the wrong kind of duck if he values quiet. Um, get a different duck, you know. He says he's done this for 10 years. Get a different duck. Uh, let's see. So a good one here is not putting themselves to bed. Uh, let's talk about training. So I've noticed through selling ducks, and this is where I get judgy. I, I warned you, right? This is where I get judgy. I've noticed through selling ducks, and I sold about five, 600 of them last year, uh, that most people just want to throw their ducks out into the run and, or let them free range or do whatever, right? They want to be hands off. They want the ducks to go do their duck things and come back and lay an egg. Um, look, man, if you really want the ducks to do something, you have to train them. Uh, so if you want them to be, uh, you know, uh, self-responsible and put themselves away at night so you, you can sit inside and watch TV or go mess with plants or whatever, uh, you have to train them. There's no question. You have to train them. So how do you train ducks? Uh, it's a lot like training cats. It takes a long time. Uh, I say that as a joke. I'm actually not serious. So uh, training ducks is easy. Uh, but you have to have some prerequisites first, right? So you got to have chickens. Uh, the chickens are the trainer. So chickens have a natural uh, desire to roost, right? So what you do is you get yourself about 10 chickens or whatever, you know, whatever number it is that you want, and you start with them. Put them in your coop. They learn after chasing them around for, you know, about a month, they learn eventually that their place to be at night is inside of the run, uh, inside of your, your area that has the door that you lock them in at night. Uh, so once your chickens are trained, uh, and they're reliably going into the run, and you've got to train your chickens too. Um, you can't just you can't just throw them out there and expect them to do their thing. You have to train your chickens by putting them in the run and feeding them in the run and showing them that the run is where they need to be, the inside run, whether it be a hen house or a screened area, whatever. You have to show them that that is where they're supposed to be. Once they learn, then you get ducks, right? So you get your ducks and you raise them to about four weeks. And those guys will be skinny, scared, and all the things that, you know, you, you don't want, right? So what you're going to do with them ducks is you're going to put them in the run. Don't force them to come out. Don't force them to do anything. Let them be in the run by themselves. By this point, the chickens will have learned that they can come out and come and go as they please, right? Go and forage and come back in. The ducks will be observing this behavior the transition between inside and outside for the, probably the next two weeks, about. Uh, they'll eventually learn that they want to be with the chickens and do what the chickens are doing because the chickens are going out and having fun and coming back and doing what they do. Eventually, after a couple, you know, about two weeks, three weeks, something like that, the ducks will go with the chickens. And, uh, you know, if they're, if I don't know what kind of breed, a, you know, chicken or duck you have but my ducks are usually super nervous and that's really the descriptor of what a runner duck is a very nervous bird but they all run in one unit you know think of all these chickens here but like 15 ducks right and they're all just moving around as one uh, that's what my ducks do but they know that they should follow the chickens at that point so you need to train your ducks you can't just throw them into the coop or throw them into your run by themselves without any guidance they're not you're gonna fail right you're gonna have a bad time uh, the ducks are gonna go out and be like freedom peace I'm gone um, so yeah train your ducks that was number two on his list of why not to keep ducks so number three is messy 
I will agree 100%. Ducks are messy. Um, it's in their nature. It's what they do. It's they dabble, they poop, uh, shit through a goose, shit through a duck. It's a real thing. Um, uh, I swear I can see what they've eaten two hours ago uh, when they poop. So they're messy, but you need to plan for that. So if you put, you know, four ducks in a, a, a five by 10 enclosure, they're gonna poop all over the place. Um, you can mitigate that by putting down a material that you can scoop out or drains well, or you can wash. Uh, a good example is you'll notice I have a bunch of mulch all around here and I had it in my hen house, but they've pooped all over that. And uh, you know, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, so you need to use a material that they can poop on uh, and drains well, because if you're gonna have water in there, or you don't have a, a, a lid or a cover over top of your coop, uh, it's gonna get wet and the ducks are gonna make it worse. I'm pretty sure ducks live on mud and they're gonna find that mud. And uh, you know, honestly, I think they're water diviners too. Cause if you don't have mud, they're gonna find mud. They're gonna make mud. Um, yeah, so anyway, so messy. Uh, that was point number three. Yes, they're messy. You don't have enough space. You need to, you need to pay attention to water. Uh, so stinky poop is the next one. I don't know, I'm out of focus there. It's like, you know, not having glasses on. Stinky poop is the next one. All right, so good analog to this. Go out to the bar, have a beer, eat a burger with like four slices of cheese on it. Uh, you know, come home, have a snack of eggs, whatever. You're gonna hate yourself in the morning for eating all that. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's gonna be miserable in the bathroom. I know it's a disgusting analogy, but here we go. Feed, grain feed specifically is the same way. Uh, if you feed them grain, it's going to stink. There's no like ifs, ands, or buts. And if you're going to the local feed store and getting feed grain to feed your ducks, you're going to have to deal with the stink. Uh, there's no, there's no good way to get around it. If you're feeding uh, corn or any of the uh, layer mash type feeds, um, it just stinks. So how do you solve it? The answer is forage. Uh, so you'll notice that I have an absolute shitload of pumpkins out there and that is part of their forage uh, you also notice that my ground is bare <laughs> uh, there's two reasons for that it's because i'm entering fall and because uh well they've all eaten most of the grass um it's also the reason that i'm having kind of a niacin issue right now is because i don't really have anything for them to eat so um I'm supplementing that other ways through, you know, grain, but, uh, it's important that you realize that grain causes stinky poo. Uh, it just, it is what it is. And if you have them in a small area, they're going to keep pooping on top of that poo and it's going to stink. Um, so, I mean, you can't really do anything about that unless you know what to do. Uh, I know sounds dumb, right? So a good way to get rid of stink uh, specifically the ammonia smell is what's called ag lime or barn lime or non-slipping lime. A lot of the horse people know what I'm talking about. You throw that stuff in a barn and it helps the horse not to slip, but it also helps get rid of the stink of ammonia. So you throw all that barn lime or ag lime down all over the place and it's, it's a white chalky powder and it helps get rid of the stink. Uh, so you, you can you can mitigate some of the things that are negatives about keeping ducks through understanding what you have to do to keep their area prepped. Uh, let's see, next one, that was number four. So the next one is number five, which would be eat a lot and waste feed. All right, so again, this is breed subjective and also how you're feeding them. Uh, so pecans, for example, are a meat bird. A lot of people keep them as pets, which I disagree with. Uh, and you can have opinions on that just as I have an opinion. Whatever. Don't be mean about it. But uh, pecans being meat birds, they're meant to eat a lot. And they do. Uh, same as ruins, which are a meat bird as well. And same as uh, silver apple yards, which are meant to be a dual purpose breed. Uh, eggs and meat. Khaki campbells too. Um, they eat a lot. And you know what? We bred them that way. Uh, now my ducks are runner ducks 
and they're a different kind of duck, right? So they stand up, they run, they look a little different. They're a lightweight bird. Uh, and what that has a, a positive side effect on is how much they eat. Uh, they don't eat a ton. So, you know, but I've, I've got, again, I've got around 70 ducks and they're all hiding over there. I, I promise I have a lot, but uh, they don't eat a lot. You know, I can feed all of these birds about, I want to say, boy, 120 birds, probably around four gallons of feed an evening. Um, <clears throat> and that fills them up. Uh, they don't really, you know, in the morning there's still a little feed left and it's, it's fine. So, um, you're going to have to accept how much they eat based on what breed you have, you know, get, get a breed that eats less, you know, don't go for the meat birds. You have to understand we bred them silver apple yards, pecans for meat, which means they want the feed conversion to be higher, which means they want them to eat a ton of feed. And that's what they do. Uh, so really you set yourself up for failure when you buy those breeds. It is what it is. You know, don't blame, you know, the, the bird, blame yourself. You didn't understand, but now you do. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be judgy, uh, get over it or whatever. But, uh, let's see here. Number six, Drake's mate with chicken hens. Uh, so yes, it's a problem. Uh, and it's a problem that can be mitigated. I have around, like I mentioned before, around 70 ducks and uh, about half of them are drakes. So what do, you know, 35 drakes do when they come of age? Well, they, they want to mate, right? Uh, just like a, a, a teenage boy, they want to mate and they're going to do it. With animals, they don't care. They're going to mate something. It could be your chicken. So how do you resolve that issue, right? How do you stop the drakes from mating hens? Uh, the answer is at the end of the day, you can't, but there are ways that you can make it less of an issue. And how you do that is you need, really, you need to pay attention to, uh, uh, hen to drake ratios, right? So for most ducks, uh, most breeds of ducks, it's going to be around one to six to one to eight. So one drake to around six hens is a, usually a safe number. Um, you can see my black duck walking around right there. He's He's, well, he's not a duck, he's a drake, but he is absolutely, uh, man, he really goes into Austin Powers mode when, uh, he wants, he wants to do his thing. Like he is absolutely relentless and that's actually his little girlfriend there. That's Hersey and Truman. Um, but he's relentless. So you really need to have the right amount of females to males. Um, it, like it or not, that's what it is. Uh, so when you see your drake mating a hen, a chicken hen, it's a good indicator that you don't have enough female ducks. And usually once that starts happening, there's no way to get it to stop because uh, that, that drake has accepted that that's what he's supposed to mate. Uh, so usually the answer is to call them, unfortunately, um, or segregate them very specifically with just other females. The same can be said when you have just drakes because the drakes will get restless and they'll mate each other and cause internal damage. So it can be a real issue. And drakes are among the only, uh, I think a few species of bird that actually have a penis. Uh, yes, I said that word, uh, but we're being scientific here. So they're one of the only birds that have one. And the difference between them and mammals is uh, a mammal, like, um, it's okay, so in the mammal kingdom, uh, a lot of males have what's called a penile bone. So whales and dogs and uh, chimpanzees actually have a penile bone. I think it's chimpanzees. Um, humans don't. Ducks don't. But opposite is true, so ducks actually have a penis. The problem here is, with ducks, it works differently. Um, it's more akin to a human in that it, in, it inflates, right? The difference is it inflates very rapidly with ducks. So what happens is they get that thing into a chicken and it literally explodes into the chicken uh, and it can cause internal rupturing and damage. Uh, and it's also cork shoe, or, yeah, cork screw shaped. So what happens is it's just going in and it's, it's finding every area that it can potentially go into um, and it can cause internal damage and hemorrhaging. Uh, and also uh, lacerations, punctures, and stuff like that. So it can kill. It can kill a hen. But you need to have enough ducks 
for that drake if you're going to keep drakes. So that's how you can mitigate it. Don't get a drake and get a hen one to one because that's never going to work. He's going to be, he's going to need to, he's either going to overmate her and kill her or he's going to start on your chickens. Um, so get the right amount, you know, the right amount of ducks to drakes. Simple answer. Um, I know not everybody can keep that, that amount of ducks, but you're better off just having ducks than a drake with ducks. So uh, let's see, what's the next one? Number seven, dirtying up the water. Yes, absolutely. I agree with that. 100%, I agree with that. Uh, couldn't agree more. However, there's things you can do to mitigate. Uh, one is have a pond. Uh, I know that for a lot of people, that's not feasible. And uh, that's completely a right answer. It's not feasible to have a pond where they can, you know, you can dig it out every so often and, you know, get rid of the feces and all that stuff. Um, but the other answer is to do what's called a flow through drinking trough. Uh, you know, I understand that he's down in Australia and, you know, I don't know where he is specifically or if he has enough water to be able to do it. But uh, here in the state of Maryland, we have a significant amount of water because we're in a watershed. Uh, so what I do is I actually have a drinking trough, um, you know, like a, uh, oh boy, let's just walk over there real quick. I didn't kill a bird. I grabbed a bird and grabbed it by its tail and all the feathers came out in my hand. Uh, so a trough like this, but we'll walk over and I'll show you the one that I'm talking about. So you'll notice there's a trough right here. It's like a 50 gallon drinking trough made by Rubbermaid. Um, we'll do a quick zoom in here so you'll see that there's uh it's spilling over the side and there's a black hose little tiny hose there and i just have that guy on a little trickle and you can kind of see it if i can hold still you can kind of see it right next to the wood you see that right there yeah so it's, it's running real low and it flows over um and the benefit of that is it refreshes the water. Uh, so what will happen is overnight as it's running, it'll refresh that top 50 gallons. There'll still be crap in the bottom, but you'll refresh the water. Now, it does make a mess, and the ducks love it. Um, but if you want them to have fresh water and you don't feel like hauling water around and you have the space, this is a good solution. Uh, just letting a little bit of water dribble in, and that'll keep the water semi somewhat clean. Um, and overnight it'll refresh and you don't have to go dragging bins around and all that garbage. So uh, dirty in the water, it's a valid concern, but one, again, that can be mitigated. Uh, as for um, like water in their house where they sleep, you need to pay attention to how water flows, right? Uh, water will always flow downhill. So if you can, in an area of their coop, build the rest of their coop up so it's at, a, at an angle. Now y'all are gonna make fun of me here and probably judge me a little hard. My coop is a disaster, but it's because my shoulder is messed up and I can't really dig. Um, so you'll notice around the bin here, around the water, uh, you know, thing here, God, words, it's messy. Uh, but if you look over there, it's still dry. Um, there's just a hard pan of crap on top. Again, shoulders messed up. Um, so what you want to do is be able to keep that water in a specific area. You'll notice this little deeper here. So what that does is the water will actually run out this way outside of the hen house, uh, keeping the majority of the coop dry. Uh, the nice thing for me though, is I've automated this with a float. So plenty of water all the time. Real nice. I don't have to fill this stupid thing. And it doesn't freeze in the winter because it just keeps flowing slow, you know, slowly. Um, so pay attention to how your water flows and you'll keep your coop dry. Let's see. Processing duck is number eight. Uh, so yes, processing duck can be a pain if you plan to eat them. Uh, ducks have this thing uh, where they have this, you know, like chickens. Chickens have a little oil gland on the, the right at the base of their tail ducks have one too looks like a little kind of like a little nipple at the base of their tail and they use that thing they squeeze it and oil comes out of it um, ducks will use that gland to make themselves oily uh, oily all over and uh, actually if they can't excuse me uh, so if they can't preen then they get something called wet feather 
and the wet feather will make them look kind of gross and muddy and you know they'll they'll um, actually they'll sink and drown in the in a pond or a body of water if, if they have wet feather uh, it also causes the feathers not to be grippable by a normal chicken plugger so how do you solve that issue right uh, one pluck them by hand or two as you're scalding them put dawn dish soap into the scalder uh, you're gonna have to I mean you can also kind of like give them a pre bath with with dish soap to kind of give them that wash down to you know help pluck the feathers better and get rid of that oil um, or you know really the answer is take them to a place that does it for you they have the right equipment uh, don't torture yourself right uh, I know everyone wants to save a buck but if ducks are so difficult then take them somewhere to do it for you there's plenty of slaughterhouses who would happily happily take your few dollars to slaughter you know chickens or ducks for you um let's see next one number nine flightiness flightiness now there's something on there you'll see it says ducks are not pets you can disagree with me all you want and that's okay uh, i know some of you may feel like ducks are pets and you know I, I, that's fine that really is ducks to me stink you know, he makes a good point in his video that ducks stink uh, so do drakes they do they stink and i can't get over the way they smell so for me they'll never be a pet with that said uh ducks unless you spend a lot of time with them like if they're very close to you all the time like you're carrying them around in a bag they don't give a shit about you um and you know some people may believe that chickens do and they actually want to be around you and stuff but that's a falsity and uh You'll notice the chickens are kind of hanging around me. Um, let's let's try something real quick. These are all chickens that I haven't been around. Like I don't spend my time out here with these chickens. So if I stick my hand down here, you'll notice that they all come running. This is not friendship. This is feed us. Um, and a lot of people seem to mistake that for friendship. The chickens do not care about you either. Uh, uh, if you spend a lot of time with them, they'll sit on your lap. They'll appear to want to be with you. If you pet them on the chin, their eyes go closed, and because that's how you know they like scratches. Uh, but they do not want to be with you, uh, whether you whether you think so or not. Uh, they would much rather eat, and they're hoping that you are going to feed them. So uh, ducks are the same way. They don't care. They would much rather be over there dabbling or digging or eating worms or bugs or whatever it is then be sitting in your lap um like it or not they're not domestic uh, you know really domesticated animals we may call them domestic because we keep them but they're not domestic uh like a cat or a dog you know a golden retriever wants to be around you uh so much so that they're your they're actually your shadow right i know some of you guys know what i'm talking about i own a golden retriever and he loses his mind if I walk out the front door because he wants just really wants to be with me uh, <clears throat> but poultry no they're not your friends uh, and that really leads into flightiness um, you know it's like I said free disagree it is what it is I got my opinions you got yours but uh, they're just they're not pets um, so eggs is number 10 he makes a point to say that eggs are disgusting. Uh, I want to say to you that one man's opinion is just about as valuable as anybody else's. Uh, just because he feels like duck eggs are disgusting doesn't mean that you should feel like duck eggs are disgusting. Uh, if you've never had a duck egg, I really do recommend that you try one. Uh, they're great to make carbonara. They're great to make pasta with any baked goods like cakes or uh, you know pastries or whatever and uh you know really uh they're not they're not bad at all um you can use them for uh you know over easy eggs you have to cook them slower though because they become rubbery it has to do with the amount of albumin and protein in them uh, versus a chicken egg if you're looking for more protein because you like to get a quick shot of protein to boost muscle mass, then wait a second, that sounded weird. Uh, <laughs> duck eggs are good for you. Uh, they have more protein than a chicken egg. Uh, they do not taste much different than a chicken egg, in my opinion. 
They're a little bit more rich, a little bit more creamy. They do not taste musky or gross or sulfurous or, you know, any of that stuff. They're actually pretty good. Uh, you just have to, again, like everything, know how to eat them. Um, it's, it's not a, you know, it's a different thing, right? It's, it's a different thing. And I've noticed as I'm selling ducks to a lot of people, uh, often I ask them if they've ever had, uh, you know, duck eggs. And oftentimes they say, no, they're gross. And uh, I said, well, okay, have you ever actually had one? They say, no, they haven't. Uh, but that, that thought, that feeling that they have about duck eggs, someone else passed along to them, you know. Uh, <laughs> it, it, just give them a try, right? They're not bad. They're not going to kill you. They don't taste disgusting. You're not going to put them in your mouth and immediately vomit. Uh, or even be grossed out, but they're 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 nice. Um, so, just uh, I, I just want to make sure that you guys understand that not everything that everybody says is always the truth, especially on YouTube, especially on a video like his that's kind of clickbaity. Uh, you know, just give him a shot. Anyway, thank you for your time and watching this, and I will see you guys in the next one.